The lions generally at night are um, fearless. That's their time. It's the time that, that they, they rule. But what was amazing last night is that um, the behavior of the lions were completely different. Uh, they uh, had clearly been exposed to um, some a really traumatic um, e event uh, related to human wildlife conflict, I, I do believe. Most of the conflict that happens between people and lions, it's all in the daytime. You know, uh, uh, that's when people, you know, uh, would shoot lions or or try and, uh, and and you know deter them from the area. Um, so w working with lions at night is always, you know, it's basically our trump card. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the two lionesses, uh, their behaviour was really um, extraordinary. Um, they were very, very nervous of the vehicle. And there was no sound coming from the vehicle, there were no lights coming from the vehicle, but uh, they were so suspicious of it, more so than in the daytime. So I do think that um, they had been harassed at night. It's the only explanation for that. Now, um, the one lioness uh, uh, had, had two large cubs that had suddenly disappeared uh, in a time that there was quite a lot of cattle in the river. So I do think that the cattle owners, in protection of the cattle, obviously, um, you know, shot probably those two cubs uh, from a vehicle at night with a light, uh, which, by the way, is illegal. But um, I think that did, that really caused the behaviour of the lions to be so severe. But every now and then this thing flares up because people are angry. You know, it, it's it's, uh, it's it's like. You know, the, the livestock conflict, human wildlife thing, there's a huge element that's really not for this. Um, and, they, and people feel that, you know, the government and, and, and us uh, uh, collectively, you know, are, are protecting wildlife at the cost of the people, particularly lions. Um, and then this thing flares up because then they don't get the benefits. You know, all this money gets paid from, from um, you know, the tourism industry and the concessions and then, but the people on the ground feel that they're not getting the benefits, you know, and okay, one can tease that apart as to, you know, the causes and so on. Um, uh, but the fact of the matter is that, that is the reality and, 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 and tensions flare up and people feel they, they, they just take, take law into their own hands and, and sort this problem out once and for all. And that happens every now and then. Uh, and maybe that is something that's the case now, you know, we've had a severe drought. I mean, look at the impact of, of you know, COVID-19 on the population. So people are not in a, in a good space. And now you have lions that are harassing and eat, killing the few head of livestock in a time when income is, is, a, is a serious problem. Um, and then there's no, they just say, let's go and sort this out. So a, a car driving down the one up looking for these girls because They've just come from a, from a hell of a, a escapade up in the Sesfontein Dusty Plains area, which is sort of why I think they're so particularly nervous now. Uh, maybe they, they ran into some problems. They, they certainly made some kills in places that looked very dodgy and they hang around there for a day or two. We didn't hear any complaints, but you know, people don't always take the time to lay a complaint and, and you know, maybe they just they try to to shoot them or so and they, they didn't manage because these girls are clever now. So the cubs will be shot first, but now they're too small still. You know, so I do think there's, um, there's a lot of problems that could, uh, you know, uh, be prevalent in this time. A little incident that happened a while ago in Anapep Conservancy, where a female lion that had two, uh, three cubs uh, was shot down as a result of uh, human wildlife conflict. 
It came into villages, uh, into one village where it killed around eight goats and uh, in another one that where it killed six donkeys. But at one, at one incident we were with one of the farmers who, who lost his uh, donkey to this particular lion. And this farmer went with us in the field and then he saw exactly what was happening in the field. We could not see even a springbok, even anything that would say is a prey or should be a prey to lions. So, uh, and uh, his mind eventually changed that, okay, but I'm putting all the blame on the lion. The lion came to hand on my thing, but this was ex definitely out of desperation. It was not like this is what the lion wanted. I think for farmers to get to understand that for us is a good uh, achievement, and that's what we would want all the farmers to, uh, the behavior to look like. Uh, because sometimes it's basically mostly desperation than really just going to hunt the easy prey, which is the livestock. This year, uh, uh, 2020, um, and in fact it goes back to the, the end of, of uh, 2019, when uh, we, we really had uh, you know, very poor rainfall, mm -hmm. still way within the, the norms of, of, uh, of an arid area, um, but it's been a build-up of, of many, uh, several years of sort of lowish rainfall. Um, on top of that, the impact that uh, the low rainfall has had on the local communities that, that farm with livestock has been severe. Um, and as a result, the communities have had to start utilizing um, areas that are generally designated for wildlife. Mm -hmm. So moved in there with, with, their, with their livestock. Um, uh, vast numbers of livestock that then essentially obliterated the available grazing. So when the cattle moved out with a bit of rain that fell, it left uh, the area for wildlife very much depleted uh, from, from resources, you know, food and, and grazing, browsing. And as a result, um, the lions have, have suffered and, and the rest of the, the wildlife as well. So um, halfway into into year 2020, we, we sit with a very difficult situation where there's, there's really very, very little prey available in the area um, and, and vegetation is also in, in a poor state. I'm going to go back quite a few years. You know, we, we're now having what I think we're going into our eighth year of drought. And about four years into this drought, we, we realized that prey species numbers were starting to go down. Um, so we 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 talking a good four years ago. We're talking 2014, 2015, 2016. We we could pick that up already. Prey species are going down because of the drought at that time. You tend to have um, a double whammy. It's not just mortality, animals dying because there's no food for them, but they actually because there's not sufficient nutrition, they don't reproduce. And I mean, you get that in farming as well. If you don't give a, an, enough nutrients. The animals don't reproduce. So, of course, as, as prey species numbers went down, um, your, your normal um, population dynamics, which most people are aware of, numbers increase of prey species, a delay, and then your, your predator numbers also increase, and the same happens when their numbers go down. So your, your prey species numbers start going down on the graph in number, and there's a delay in time, and then your predator numbers go down because their food is now declining as well. Okay, so that's the, the basics. So yeah, we, we, we realize that we, we're facing massive challenges here. Um, and on top of it, lions causing increasing amount of problems with farmers, etc. And yeah, something had to be done. But it's a massive area and we just struggle to cover all these areas. Uh, the, the distance was, it looks like maybe 200 kilometer between, an, uh, between two hotspots is not that much. But for us, it's a big challenge because, because of the roads and the terrains. You, basically, when you drive, on average, you'll be driving between four and six hours for 200 kilometers. So for us, it's quite a big challenge. We've been pivotal in, in implementing and, and erecting and helping with the early warning system, an incredible system which we could talk about for hours later on its own because it's, it's really high tech, it's, it's groundbreaking stuff, it's, it's very exciting. Um, but just in terms of the response guys, we don't have enough people to, to get to respond to these things in time. And you know, if you, if you get a call out from um, down in the Ucha River, uh, we've got somebody who's up 
near Sesuntain or even Apua, by the time they get down there, damage is done. The team, the response team, their, their actual title is Human Wildlife Support Team. So that is not just about lions, okay? This is about human wildlife conflict all over. Um, so we are talking also about elephants. And of course, we know in, in parts of the um, Kuneni areas, but particularly the eastern Kuneni highlands, we've got a dramatic increase in elephants. And so that is also part of our responsibility that we have to take part. We have the most incredible resources in this, this area. I, I think there's a global responsibility towards the, the resources we have. We have some massive, massive challenges. Um, I think we're on the upbeat side of it. I really think we're making a difference. Um, we, we just need some help.